Welcome to the virtual forum for the Asbury Park Board of Education candidates, sponsored by the Statewide Education Organizing Committee. I am Evelyn C. Murphy, co-president of the League of Women Voters of Monmouth County. The League of Women Voters is a 102-year-old nonprofit, nonpartisan political organization. Membership in the League is open to everyone age 16 or older of any gender who supports our mission to empower voters and defend democracy. As a nonpartisan organization, we never support or oppose a party or a candidate. The media sponsor for tonight's forum is The Coaster. A recording of tonight's forum will be available on our website, lwvmonmouth.org and on vote411.org, the League's National Nonpartisan Voter Guide. No other recording of the event for any purpose is permitted as agreed to by the candidates. Here is Beverly Lyons from our sponsor, the Statewide Education Organizing Committee. Good evening, my name is Beverly Lyons and I am the board president and on behalf of our director, Elizabeth Smith, we welcome you to the Asbury Park Board of Education and Candidates Forum. We're pleased and honored to have our candidates present and ready for a time of sharing and engage in dialogue with our public attendees. The Asbury Park chapter of the Statewide Education Organizing Committee is a group of parents and other residents who are committed to improving the education of our children with the district and school board. It is my honor to introduce Susan Safaris, our moderator, and she lives outside of Asbury Park. Susan. Thank you, Beverly, and good evening, everyone. Tonight's candidates are running for three seats on the Asbury Park Board of Education. The successful candidate will serve a three-year term on the board. Tonight's candidates, in alphabetical order by slate, are Mr. Victor Carr, Carey, who I don't believe was able to attend due to unforeseen circumstances. I'm not sure he was possibly coming later. Uh, Mr. Ramon Palmer, Mr. Tracy Rogers, and they are on the children's first slate. And Mr. Dominic Ladaraca, Ms. Barbara Lisinski, and Dr. Michael Penna running on the moving ahead together slate. The format for tonight's program is as follows. Each candidate will give a one minute opening statement. The time will be kept by our timekeeper. She will give the candidates a 30 second warning by holding up a yellow card that says 30 seconds. Followed by when the, the candidate's time is up, she will hold up a red card saying stop. And at that point, the candidates will have to stop their state. I'll let them finish their sentence, and then I will ask them to stop, and we'll move to the next candidate or question. Um, and it, after the end of the opening statements, the there will be I will be posing some questions to the candidates that were submitted ahead of time by the audience, people in the in the town who are affected by this. Each candidate will have a one minute and be able to answer the question, they'll have one minute and that same timekeeping process will take place. At the conclusion of the question period, which will be about 40, 40, 45 minutes, each candidate will give a 90 second closing statement. The order of the opening and closing statements were selected at random prior to the beginning of the program. I also will vary the order of the answers to questions in order to afford as much opportunity to go first, last, and in between to all the candidates. Let's get underway. Our first opening statement will be given by Mr. Ladaraca. Good evening. I'm Dominic Ladaraca. I've been an Asbury Park resident since 2007. I've been on the school board for the last six years, serving as chair of the finance committee for the past four years. I have a bachelor's degree from University of Pennsylvania, I have a law degree from Rutgers University in Newark. I practiced law for approximately a decade out of state and then began a career in education, both teaching and being an administrator at the post-secondary level, community colleges. As a vice president, 
I've managed large public budgets. I've run academic programs. I've created workforce development programs. My last career position was with Brookdale Community College. Upon leaving that, my wife and I created and ran a retail business in Asbury Park for six years. That essentially summarizes my experience that I bring to the school board. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Our next opening statement will be by Dr. Penna. Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Michael Penna. I'm running for Asbury Park School Board. I'm thrilled to be on the ballot this year with current school board members Barbara Lazinski and Dominic Lactaraca as the Moving Ahead Together ticket. I think we make a fantastic team. I am not a career politician. I'm an educator, I'm a high school teacher, and I teach students with disabilities and special needs. The Asbury Park School Board has been working tirelessly to improve academic performance of all students. And if I'm elected to the board, I will continue to support those initiatives and look for ways to improve them. In recent years, the performing arts programs have dwindled within the district. And as an educator of performing arts and a professional actor, I fully believe that arts education is fundamental to a student's growth. So if I'm elected to the school board, I will do everything I can to revitalize the performing arts program. I decided to run for school board because I wanted educators and the education community represented on the school board. I wanted members of the LGBTQ plus community represented on the school board. I'm a proud member of that community. And that is why I hope that this election, you'll all vote for Barbara, Dominic, and myself, because you share our vision for Asbury Park School District. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, our next opening statement is from Ms. Lazinski. Good evening, my name is Barbara Lazinski. I'm running for re-election to the Asbury Park Board of Education. I'm a 37 year resident of Asbury Park. I was a dispatcher with the police department for 17 and a half years. I started the first national night out against crime. Um, the first Make a Difference Day served as a housing authority commissioner and chair and an Asbury Park toy drive trustee for 20 years. The toy drive served over a thousand children each year, which I was honored to be a part of. I'm dedicated to this community. I'm also a retired teacher. As a current board member, I am proud of the progress the district has made in improving educational opportunities for students. Our ch children and families we serve need our support. This election is very important. Dominic, Michael, and I have the educational backgrounds and experience to continue to move this district forward. We are Blue Bishop proud. Thank you. Mr. Palmer will give our next opening statement, please. Good evening, my name is Ramon Palmer and I am with the Children First Ticket. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters, the COASTER, and the Statewide Education Organizing Committee for giving us the opportunity to speak tonight. I've been a resident of Asbury Park for over 50 years. I'm a graduate of Asbury Park School System. I'm a graduate of Seton Hall University, and I'm a retired fireman from the city of Asbury Park. I've sat on the school board at two previous occasions. I've volunteered my time running a basketball program in the school system for about five or six years. I've coached football in the city as well as the Little League Baseball. I am committed to the kids of Asbury Park because I was once one of those children of Asbury Park. And the education that we speak of uh, needs a tremendous amount of help and support. Uh, the community is crying out for change. We can't continue doing the same things we have done and expect something different. It's the definition of insanity. The children's Thank first you. ticket is Thank you, best Mr. for the Mr. city of Asbury Palmer. Park. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rogers, you will unmute please and take our next final opening statement. I'm Tracy Rogers. I've lived in Asbury Park since 2015. I've been a member of many of the committees, quality of life, but I've also been established in communities like Newark, where I've helped to redevelop, redefine, and recreate. I've, I've been an advocate for housing, successful success, and also an entrepreneur. I, with the Children's First Team, is looking forward to being a part of this community that actually takes advantage of the opportunity of making sure we are transparent, we're cooperative, and consolidating with the community to have the best school district ever. The district has come through some major problems we've seen in the media, but we want to address the same these things that have gone on to redefine what this district will look like. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, that concludes our opening statements. And now I will move to the first question. And the first uh, person that I'm going to ask to answer the question is Mr. Ladaraka. What do you see as the primary work of the Board of Education? And what will be your personal focus as a member of the board? Well, the, the primary work of the Board of Education is to set the overall policy. It is improper to micromanage, to set uh, individual interests above the greater policy interests. And those policy interests should be those things that you are uh, confident will best serve the academic interests of the students. Um, what I bring is my experience, as I, I briefly mentioned before, in both academic programs and management of financial public budgets to be able to put resources where they need to be in a time where Asbury Park is suffering from a loss of state funding and still focus the administration on the academic performance of our students. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Lazinski, the next, you wanna answer the question about the primary work of the board and what your personal focus will be? Well, the primary work of the Board of Education is make sure the district is well run. And by that we set policies and we make sure that everyone that's supposed to be doing mm -hmm. their jobs are through the superintendent. The superintendent is the only employee of the Board of Education. Everybody else works for him. Um, I have a lot of institutional knowledge. I've been on the board off and on for a number of years. I also have uh, the background in teaching, which helps me understand a lot of the day-to-day -day operations of the educational side of uh, the Board of Education and the district. My dedication to the students and always thinking of them first in my decision making. Sometimes I don't agree with everybody, but I'm one person that has a very strong personality and I do stick to my guns. So when I have a decision to be made, I make it regardless of what everybody else thinks. I'm very positive in how I view things. And that gives me a little advantage sometimes. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Palmer, the answer to the Question, please. So I think a board member has three objectives. One, primarily to set policy. Two would be to set goals and objectives for the superintendent to adhere to. And the third thing is to speak to the community, be a part of the community, those children, those families, interact with them, speak with them, understand what it is that they desire, what they need. You can't sit on high and tell me you have interests of children of the community, you have no relationship with them. You have no relationship with their parents. So the responsibility of a board member is threefold. Again, set policy, goals and objectives for the superintendent, and interact with the parents and the children of the community, which you say you serve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Penna. Um, I agree with both my running mates that obviously the role of the Board of Education is to set policy and um, to work with the superintendent. Uh, I come to this position as a teacher currently, working as a teacher, working with kids with disabilities and special needs. And so I have the understanding of both what the students need and what the teachers need. And so sitting on the board, I, I'm able to work with both sides and be able to understand that, of course, the students always come first and what they need is what we should be working every time that we can to make possible. I also bring to the table um, performing arts. I talked about in my opening statement that the performing arts program in the district has dwindled over the years. And I would really like to see that become something special. Um, the performing arts is a safe space for students. It's a place where students can find a home. And I believe there is so much work that can be done to revitalize that program. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Rogers. Uh, I believe, as, as Ramon Palmer had stated, our policy is one, to create policy, number two, to give direction and a supervision and an outreach uh, for the superintendent. But the third, and it's the most important, is the community interaction. You cannot actually 
uh, achieve anything in this district unless you know what you're achieving. And when you don't see that from the community, you don't hear that from the parents, that their children are being educated well, they're being taken care of, and they're provided the best education possible where they see they will be able to reach an out peak above and beyond what a normal situation is. So our, our position is to definitely is to make sure we connect all those things together and to make sure that the community has a voice in this direction of the school. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next question, um, and Mr. Rogers, I will ask you to answer this first this time. And the question is, what is your vision to engage parents and the community? How do you propose to accomplish that engagement? Well, the district uh, during COVID had admitted that they did not have uh, a reach to the children because they did not even have correct phone numbers and uh, accessibility of knowing who their parents were. One of the first thing is policy for us is to make sure that we have a communication, open and honest dialogue with the community and the outreach. As we know where they live, we know what their needs are, and we have a direction for these children to have a better outreach during afternoon and during uh, times when they will be looking at other things and not be, have any educational time. So we want to make sure that we continue to make sure that the direction is centered on children in the direction of education to provide more opportunities for them to be involved in the community. Thank you. Dr. Penna, will you take the next spot, please? Sure. Um, just like I think everyone here is saying, the most important thing is to communicate with the community. And so by doing that, um, I don't think community comes to school board meetings as much as they can. They actually probably don't even know they're happening. Um, I think it's important to communicate with everyone in the community, with the students, with the parents. And the way that we can do that is by being, being with them, being around them, going to events, being present. Um, and as a teacher, I'm present at anything that's taking place in my school. So as a school board member, as much as I am humanly possible and able to, I'll be present at anything that is happening, whether that's sports events, whether that's events that are taking place hopefully with performing arts, and getting to know the community, getting to know the students, and getting to know all the teachers so that we can better serve them and work with the superintendent. Thank you. And Mr. Palmer? Yes. Um, you have to be able to deal with the community. Uh, but there's many facets to the community. So you have to talk to the children and their parents. There was a, you know, there was a football game that got canceled on September 2nd. On September 9th, there was a home football game and only two board members out of the nine showed up. And two of the board members here tonight were not there. The superintendent was not there. How do you say you support children, you support the community and you don't show up? That would have been a great opportunity to show the community that you're there for them. I was there. I go to the games. I go to different events in the, in the community. I walk the streets. I talk to the people who send kids to the district. Again, there are other stakeholders in the community that you have to build a relationship and a rapport with. But in order to understand how to set policy for the ones that's needed, you need to talk to their parents. You need to sometimes speak to the kids. You need to be around those of them that you are serving and not sitting on high and making decisions for thank people that you have no relationship with. Th thank you, Mr. Palmer. And Ms. Lazinski? Uh, first, to address the uh, fantastic event that happened on um, the other uh, Friday night game that Mr. Palmer is referring to, um, I'm on the committee that helped organize that and helped initiate that. Of course, unfortunately, because it had to be changed the date several times, I was unable to attend because I wasn't in state. So, But I heard it went exceptionally well, and I'm glad it did because we try to honor former students as well as present students. Um, the parents are involved very well, like this year and last year. If you went to back to school night, you would see the parents out in full force. And that's a positive sign. We also have the Dorothy McNish Center doing parent training. We have several events. I try to go to as many events as I can in the schools and also in the community. Um, I see, a couple of the candidates there 
at the events I attend. And sometimes I haven't seen some at all. And I think it's unfortunate that we can't be everywhere at every time. Thank, Thank you, you. Ms. Lisinski. Your time, unfortunately, is up. And Mr. Uleta Raka, you will have the last opportunity to answer this question about engaging parents and the community, how you plan to do that. Okay, well, we do it in, in a variety of ways. So like almost every other school district, as Barb mentioned, we have back to school night. Uh, I was at the high school back to school night and I heard the high school principal say, anyone at any time can email her and set up an appointment and meet with her. We have an administration and we have a board that's open to everyone. Uh, it is every event attended by every individual? Um, no. Other communications are through social media, through sending communications back with the students. We've increased those efforts. We've held town halls to, to address certain issues. So we're doing quite a bit with regard to the community, whether individuals care to acknowledge it or not. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next question has like a, a def, uh, some verbiage before it. So I'm gonna read some, some words and then I'll ask the actual question. A number of voters submitted questions about special education and the impact of budget cuts on the district's most vulnerable students. Cuts to child study teams and related services, cuts to paraprofessionals for students with severe disabilities, increasing burdens on special education supervisors leading to resignations, and cuts to speech therapy, occupational therapy, and physical therapy. What will you do to ensure the district is addressing and meeting the responsibility to follow policies that are transparent and inclusive of the entire student population. And in my random order, Mr. Ladaraka, you are up first. Well, with regard to the reference to the various cuts, as I mentioned, Asbury Park has lost $26 million in state aid. We have therefore had to reduce the operating budget, and we have done so by $18 million, from 68 million to 50 million. In doing that, you are going to lose individuals you would prefer not to. But with fewer funds, a loss of enrollment due to COVID, the need for staff and teachers, much like the need for administrators, goes down and you have to make those cuts. And I've trusted in the administration and the cuts they've presented to this board to do so. What we then have to do is redouble our efforts toward any grant funding we can obtain to then serve those areas that uh, have been hit by funding. As Michael mentioned. Oh, thank, thank you, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. That minute goes fast sometimes. Right, Ms. right. Lizinski, That's a stop. you're next to answer this question, please. Sure. This district does concentrate on its special ed um, population, as I, I'm not sure if a lot of people know that the charter schools do not fund special education. This district does. Um, if there's a special education or somebody who needs extra help, in the charter schools, the this district pays for that. And it's not a fully funded mandate. So the district does spend quite a bit of money that is not funded by the state to help all the special needs students. We also instituted a life skills program this year in all grade levels to address a lot of the special um, needs of these students. Budget cuts do hurt. And when you have to cut the budget, Staff, as Mr. Ladaraka said, has to be cut in some areas. And the, the administration does really look at what the student needs are before these cuts are made. And it's unfortunate. We've lost a lot of funding. Thank you. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Can you ask the question again? Because I'm sure. getting a lot of- Sure. Break. I mentioned about all the different cuts to the different programs. 
And the question actually is, what will you do to ensure the district is addressing and meeting the responsibility to follow policies that are transparent and inclusive of the entire student population, including, I guess, all where all the cuts were made to the special ed and physical therapy and so forth. So I, again, I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding because whatever, but I, you said something about making cuts. So let me hurry up and try to answer. So there have been cuts that have been made. There have been teachers that have left the district uh, for various reasons. Uh, and a lot of it is because they're not giving the, the proper uh, utensils needed to educate the children. So when we talk about you know making cuts and all like that, if the primary objective is about educating children, then we have to really take a look at who needs to be cut and where. And because we can never uh, not have what teachers need to properly educate the kids. So part of the issue is if we're losing money from the state, then we need to find other means. We need to partner with other people. There's people that maybe provide opportunity services that can come in and partner with us to help us properly educate these kids, give us the utensils that we need, that the teachers would need to do their job. We have to be creative. We have to, we have to do more than just sit back and say, okay, we've lost funding from the state. And now we have to take teachers and parents away from what these children need. Again, children first, if that's the objective, then we have to turn up on every rock. We have to exhaust every opportunity to figure out what needs to happen in order to properly educate these children. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Penna? Um, so I understand this, this question very deeply as a special ed teacher. Um, uh, it does, it, it hurts when we start to cut in that particular area. Um, but with, as my running mates had said, since they're current school board members, um, millions of dollars were cut from the budget that we have here in Asbury Park. So some cuts have to be made. And I am sure that they worked with the superintendent and administration within the schools to figure out where the best place was to make those cuts. I'm sure that the special ed students still have the resources that they need, the amount of teachers that they need based on enrollment and what we have in the schools. Um, so as a teacher, I see teachers get cut all the time within my school or let go because of enrollment and because of funding. And constantly I think about is my job on the line. But I know that what they're doing and the decisions that they have to make sometimes are based on just what they're receiving and who they have. And they're really trying to make sure that the students have what they need to make them successful in learning. I will say that some of the things that were mentioned by Barbara, the life skills program, I think is a wonderful initiative. And there are other things like the Allied Health Academy, the Engineering Thank Academy, you. and everything that Thank we've you. Set up. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Penna. And Mr. Rogers? Well, first, let me say, um, we get a lot of, we, we as me and Palmer, we, we talk to the community every day. And one of the things is we're not hearing the same thing this board says there, that, that the board members actually are, are, are things that are going on. We're hearing parents with special needs children calling to us to help them, to direct them to other services, to direct them to uh, getting advocacy for them in the district. These are things that are coming to us from the, from the parents who are in the district. We are also hearing this from staff around the district that no, they have not made the best cuts. They have not made the best decisions. And they were not involved in any of that uh, direction that was made in the cuts in this district. So when we keep saying we, we're doing everything, I have parents and staff that are telling us differently. And they're the people who are on the ground in the buildings every day that most of these board members are not in every day and seeing what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. OK, uh, the next question is a short one this time. Uh, what can be done? to promote arts and music and make these electives available to all students in the district? And this time we'll start with Dr. Penna. All right, I like this question. Uh, well, obviously I believe that the performing arts is highly important as a performing arts teacher. Um, it is part of the curriculum for the state. So it needs to be part of an everyday school. When as a graduate, you have to have an arts to graduate. So that might be a visual arts, but what about the performing arts? We do have music within our district, but what about theater? I think that if we start to think about ways that we can implement that back into our schools, whether that is hiring a theater teacher, just to see how it starts and where it goes uh, at the younger ages, and then get that to evolve into the high school. I really think that it's gonna, it's gonna bring great things to the district. Um, performing arts, theater, dance, music is so important to students and it helps them grow 
a lot of students who, like we talked about, special needs students, special education students who don't feel comfortable within their own shell, find a home with other children who really want to explore and come and break out of that shell. So I really think this is a discussion, if I'm elected on the school board, that we can start talking about and really try to move forward. Thank you. Uh, next, Mr. Palmer. Yes. Um, one of the biggest issues that I have with, with even this question is that we have a young lady that's currently a Philadelphia Eagles cheerleader who came from our district who had to go be sent to Red Bank Regional to their performing arts program. But we need to acknowledge those of them who have left our district that have gone on to be able to do these type of things. So I am absolutely an advocate of trying to bring those type of things into our district. Um, you, 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 you have to want to have those kinds of programs into the uh, community for the children and all like that, because there's opportunity to go to college to further the education, job opportunities. But we also need to follow those of them who have gone on to do these things, acknowledge them, bring them back into the district, let the children see that they exist, that they're real, that they, they too sat in the same seats that they sat in. And maybe you can build a relationship and a rapport with the organizations that they work with that would help finance, that would help send individuals and people here that can help grow that type of uh, opportunity here for our kids. So again, when you, when you know the community, when you have relationships with the parents and the kids, you would know that we have a cheerleader for the Philadelphia Eagles from Asbury Park. Thank you. That, thank you, Mr. Palmer. Ms. Lazinski? Could you just repeat the question for sure. me? What can be on. done to promote the arts and music, arts, arts and music and make these electives available to all students in the district? Well, right now we do have uh, the music teachers in the district that started in all grade levels. We also um, just initiated the graphic arts again. We did have performing arts quite a while ago. And because of reorganizing courses and things, um, the performing arts um, kind of went by the wayside. I think it's very important to have kids act, enjoy being someone else perform in front of a crowd. It's good for esteem. It's good for public speaking. Um, we do have all those things in the district. We just have to re reinvent performing arts. Um, it's something that I like. I think it was fantastic. But with budget cuts and things that, that are coming up, we need to focus on the needs of all the students and try to implement programs that we can continue through the years. So right now it's a difficult thing to do. And uh, it's not something that is unattainable. It's something that we have to be creative about. Thank, thank you. Okay, uh, next is um, Mr. Ladaraka. Well, you can see that uh, Barb, Michael and I are on record as saying we, we support promoting moving forward with music and performing arts. Uh, what do you need? Well, one thing you need, is, particularly when students are choosing electives, is student interest. Uh, I don't think anyone is more qualified to engage student interest than Dr. Penna, who's been on Broadway on a few occasions and can bring uh, the, the interest and the stories to the students and discuss with them the benefits of getting theater education. The second thing you need is resources. So the voters need to decide what ticket is best positioned to go to the business community and other organizations. Who has a record of doing that that could bring resources for music and the performing arts and make their decisions based upon that? Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Rogers, please, for the art and music inclusion question. Well, let, let's be honest about this, and it's not what 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 ticket is going to be because we're 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 we want to support the arts, and this these board members are ones that took art away two years ago. I was screaming at a board meeting that we were remo removing art teachers, and now Mr. Penn is coming along to want to bring back theater arts, which I think is a great move, which I support just as I supported keeping the art teacher. We have to look at how we budget this 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 budget, and we have to be in, inclusive of the community to make sure that they were doing it correctly. We have to be involved in knowing what is fitted in this budget, and the community has to be involved. 
We cannot just sit back and keep saying, oh, these people can't do this. And I have bought millions of dollars to an investment program that I'm dealing with. So I, resources are not, uh, uh, not a, a, a story for me. It's something I can bring. But the more effectiveness is that I want to be in the community, making sure that the children understand what we can bring to the table, what the parents understand we can bring to the table. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to kind of skip around a little with the original order because the sponsor had a question that they would like the candidates to address. And that question has an opening statement. Uh, the Asbury Park School District is experiencing drastic funding issues that stem from an array of intertwined developments, declining stock of affordable housing, dwindling enrollment, reduction in the city's share of con contributing finances. It might make sense to bring these the three entities together, the school district, the city, and the housing authority, to work on a collaborative plan of action to bring Asbury Park back to thriving once again. Please share your thoughts. And first, I'm going to ask Ms. Lazinski to address this question first. I think I'm going to start off with um, discussing the S2 bill. I found out we, um, we've met with the city um, and also other people. And it's something that I think a lot of people really didn't understand until it came down to brass tacks, that the state's going to cut funds. And they're expecting the tax base to recover a certain amount of money. I don't think that people realized that this was going to happen. So until somebody says my tax taxes are going up, they didn't start saying, oh, what's this all about? So the Board of Education has been trying and the, and the administration to find ways to make sure the tax cuts and the tax increases are further down the road than S2 predicted. And this is something that our board has been doing during the last few years. We're mindful of the impact of S2, where most of our community and even our leaders didn't know. I think that's important. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Palmer? You're muted. You're muted. Please unmute. Yes. Thank when, you. When, you, when you speak about collaborating with those other entities, you collaborate by having a public forum. So you meet with the city, the housing authority, and the school board in a setting where the community as a whole can come and be a part of the process. You know, we begin to have ideas. We begin to share uh, resources and opportunities. You don't, you don't just have conversation and you don't involve, again, all the stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders? The people in the community, right? You, again, we spoke about the housing authority, the city, and the school board. We need to collectively come together have a meeting in the community. We can hold it at the school, which would be able to probably house, you know, seek more people. But we'll have a meeting where all of the stakeholders can come in and give ideas, suggestions. We can communicate. We can figure out what's the next step in the process to help resolving this issue. Not just, you know, I've spoken to the city or things like that. Not saying I, I mean, as a group, as a whole. Again, all the stakeholders. In order to change what's going on in this district, right? And it's great to bring back the arts and all those other different things. But we have an issue in our community with kids not being able to read on grade level. I think we have to start at some basics before we talk about some other things. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, Dr. Penna, on you, please. I do agree. Of course, everyone has to communicate all stakeholders. Uh, one thing I'll point out is that there's a school board meeting every month. And at that school board meeting, stakeholders are welcome to come and have a conversation with the school board and to voice their opinions. And from what I know, there isn't a very big crowd at the school board meetings. So I hope that the community will come and start to have that conversation again with the school board. Uh, just to, to point out about the performing arts um, um, that was just said about uh, reading level. Uh, performing arts can help students with reading. Performing arts can help students with math, with anything. Performing arts can help students improve their academics. So no matter what, it's a very important thing to have in the schools. And as a special ed teacher that teaches reading and writing and to kids with dyslexia, I had dyslexia, I grew up with it. Um, I fully believe that there are all types of ways to work within the special education department to help the students improve their reading. And I think performing arts is part of that. Thanks. 
Thank you. Um, Mr. Rogers, please. Well, um, we keep talking about conversation and yeah, S2 keeps brought, uh, is being brought up. This was a decision that was made by a private administration in a city that says that we can give developers dollars and not get the this, this school dollars. And now it's coming back to haunt us. But we have to look at how we're going to reinvent ourselves. We have to look at generating more income. We have to look at finding other resources and grants. But uh, I, I also uh, bear to Mr. Penna that we do have board meetings and uh, you can ask the other, uh, your, your part of your team, the uh, attorney says, this is a public comment. This is not a dialogue. And they will not answer any questions because the board attorney has told them not to. So you have people that do not feel that they can just come, they, they just say something, have no response, no have feedback, or nothing gets done. This is, this is going to be a different changer if we can get everybody to the table, if we can have discussions with all facets of the community, the city, the uh, housing authority, and uh, the school board. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and uh, finally, do you have anything to add, Mr. Ladaraka? Well, as I understand the question from the sponsor, the, the answer is an obvious yes, that we should be working together, and we have been. I've had at least four conversations with the city, although I've not had any with, with the housing authority. Uh, the other obvious is that, of course, you open it to all to gather ideas and information from the, from the community. But if Mr. Palmer is suggesting that that therefore results in a plan and an agreement among two public entities, I, I greatly disagree. That's not how you ultimately get something done. With the community input and ideas, you then sit down and negotiate based on your relationships, your experience, your ability to pull off partnerships like this in the past and look at people who have done that in other aspects of their life. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think we have time for this one last question. And th this question is, Asbury Park is effectively a racially segregated school district, 97% minority enrollment. What are the implications for education and student experience in this district? What will you do to address the issue? And first up is Mr. Palmer. Okay, so yes, absolutely. Asbury Park is a segregated school system. During the time I was in school, we had people from Dill, Allenhurst, Bradley Beach, Avon, Belmar, the sending districts. So there's a social aspect to learning academically, right? Just because, you know, you when you're around other people, you learn other things, music, conversations, you know, their background, who they are. There's, there's a broad thing of learning, not, you know, when you're in a segregated school system. So we want to bring about a change. Now, one of the things I'd like to do is bring um, vocational to our school system, right? You bring back the auto mechanics, wood shop, different things that, again, it helps in um, teaching young people to have a skill to go out into the world to survive. So just like there's other districts that have programs, then other kids may want to come into Asbury to utilize our programs, again, which would give us money. And then again, it would help offset some of uh, the segregated segregation that we have by bringing other diverse students into our district. So we want to try to bring programs in that would entice others to come into the city, which would also bring us money, which would help with the loss that we're getting from the school, I mean, from the state. But it also okay. will help the kids of Asbury Park as well. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Ms. Lazinski? I think one of the um, key things is that when uh, we have a pre preschool that's free, we have parents that send their kids to preschool. but then opt out and go other places. We have to make sure that all parents who start in our school district continue. Um, I think one of the reasons this happens is the bad publicity that people seem to perpetuate that is unfair to our staff, our teachers, our families, and our students. We have a wealth of intelligence in our school. We have good kids. We have great teachers. They, they succeed. Yes, you know, it's not 
some of the more wealthiest districts in Monmouth County. But we have kids that earn college associate's degrees before graduating high school. They get CT, they get uh, certificates so they can go to nursing nursing field when they graduate. We have kids that are able athletically to go to a college. We have kids that do careers after high school. Thank you. They Ms. need Lizinski. more promotion. Thank not- you, Ms. Lisinski. Uh, Mr. Ladaraka? This is a critical time for Asbury Park. The schools are primarily African-American and Latinx students, and yet the, the town has come back. Property values have, have skyrocketed and primarily uh, white population now um, is involved in the city. We need to engage both sides. And this one I happen to agree with Mr. Palmer that if you add programs, you have a tendency then to draw students of all races. And that's exactly what we've done with an allied health academy, an engineering academy, and the Dream Academy, whereby students get over 60 college credits and Associates of Arts degree as they graduate 12th grade from Asbury Park High School. Piggybacking off of Barb says, we need to get that message out more and this information. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rogers. Yes, right now we have to look at two things. When a person moves to a certain area, they look at the school district. And you you determine, is that the best district for your child? And I was very shocked to find out a, a, a uh, family that lived in Asbury Park was sending their child to deal. And I was very upset at this. But if we are saying that we want to have the best, that all the students come, we have to give the best product. And right now, when we have articles that go out and say our, our, our district football team uh, uh, loses uh, May 4th for the season, and most of the kids are ineligible. That does not play well in the media for people to look at. So we have to recorrect all these mistakes that we're, we're saying that are not there. We have to be honest with ourselves, and we have to look to be honest to make sure we're giving out the best product to make sure that we can attract many other different communities and different other people outside this district to want to come to Asbury Park to live here and go to school. The district depends on what we create and not what some fairy tale that keeps coming up. Thank thank you, Mr. Rogers. And finally, to this question, Dr. Penna. Um, So I I agree with what Mr. Lazzaracca was saying, uh, that this is a critical time for Asbury Park schools and that this is the time to start making those changes. Um, I think they've done some great work over the last few years creating those specific programs that were listed already, the Life Skills Program, the Dream Academy, Allied Health Academy, Engineering Academy, all of those things that they're implementing. As I've said before, implementing a performing arts program, maybe a performing arts academy like Red Bank Regional has and some of these schools have. We have the talent, I'm sure, here in Asbury Park, and we can really work with that to try to get people to come back to our district. I think one thing that hasn't been mentioned here is charter schools is a real problem in Asbury Park, um, taking a lot of students away from Asbury Park. So we really need to think about messaging and talking about all of these unique programs that are already implemented and what's coming in the future. And I think one important distinction between charter schools and Asbury Park is that we accept all students, no matter where they are, and all of their individual strengths, where charter schools pick and choose. So hopefully we can make those changes. Thanks. Thank you. And I want to thank all the candidates for their thoughtful responses. And at this time, we'll move on to the next portion of our program, where each candidate will have 90 seconds to give a final closing statement. And the first person to give the closing statement is Ms. Lazinski. Well, I want to thank uh, the League and um, everyone for inviting us here tonight. Um, I hope that when people go to the polls, they think about who they're going to vote for. The children are our center. And this board, this present board, and the the individuals I'm working with to run for re-election and election have the children in mind. The district so far has cut per pupil costs way down. The budget has been cut by $18 million. 
we have the economic, economic um, excuse me, the enrichment programs for all students this year, not just a select few students, all students get enrichment. The central office is going to be relocated to Obama. We're not going to close it. We're not selling it. There's a life skill program developed this year for all students. The Dream Academy is still going strong. Um, the Allied Health Academy, the students get a certificate so they can start a nursing career at the hospital as soon as they, they graduate. We have an engineering academy that prepares students for multitude of careers after graduation. We've updated our curriculum. It's now up to date with all the state standards, including the Amistad and the LGBTQ inclusive curriculum. So our district is moving forward and we need to support our students and our families. Thank, thank you. The next statement will be from Mr. Palmer. So again, I would like to thank the League of Women Voters, the COASTER and the Statewide Education Organizing Committee for this event this evening. Um, but there was a survey where 304 districts were surveyed, Asbury Park is ranked 304 educationally in reference to the SATs. So when we talk about how people are graduating with these certificates to go to college and they can do, I, I don't, I, I can't say that it's not true or I'm not gonna say that, but I'm going to tell you that there's an article that we're 304 out of the 304 school survey. Change is absolutely necessary, right? So we had uh, Mr. LaRocca talk about all the resources that he can bring to the district. He's been on the board for two terms. Where are the resources? Again, the stakeholders are everyone in the community, have a conversation, a meeting, not just conversation, a meeting with the housing authority, the city and the school board all at the same time, involving everyone from the community. So you can hear what's going on. So we can together, and that's the only way it's going to happen, together bring about the necessary changes in the district. Our kids need more services. They need more help. And that's what uh, uh, Children First is going to do. We're dedicated to the children of this district. We're dedicated to the teachers. We're dedicated to the community as a whole. So thank you for this opportunity. Thank you again. And on November 8th, vote Children First. Thank you. Thank you. And the next statement is from Mr. Ladaraka. I would also like to thank the League of Women Voters for, for this opportunity. Uh, I would state that, that I'm proud of what the school board has accomplished these past six to eight years. Uh, people seem to have amnesia. I think we might want to, I will put up that record of performance against the performance of the school board in the 2000s and late 1990s any day. And I wish that the Asbury Park voters will do the same. We focused on academics, fiscal responsibility, and holding all staff accountable to serve the students. Regarding Asbury Park students in particular, I have personally mentored a number of them. I've hired a number of them in my local business, and my wife and I have funded a scholarship every year for the past five years for an Asbury Park High School graduate. I challenge everyone to do that. I and my running mates are dedicated public servants, we're focused on children, and we have a record of professional and ethical conduct. The state quality scores for the Asbury Park School Board have doubled over the past six years, and the scores are in the top 10th percentile for governance. I'm committed to fully funding our public schools, and I believe Asbury Park cannot say it's a great city with music and culture. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really running close on system. time, so I'm going to stop you right there. Thank you. And Mr. Rogers, I believe you have the next statement, next closing statement. I would like to thank the League of Women Voters. I'd like to thank the organizing sponsor. And I'd like to thank all of all the listeners. Right now, Asbury Park is in a, in a turning cycle right now. We have seen gentrification. We have seen all the economic changes. But what we not have seen is a successful school district turnaround. I've been at many board meetings. I've addressed many concerns. We're now moving people to the Banks Avenue building for years when we're paying a building that the state audit said we shouldn't be in. We, we continue to look at what uh, how we were top heavy 
when we were talking about it, while we were getting rid of principles. We, we, we've discussed these things over and over again, and it takes three to five years to get anything done. Right now, we need to examine what needs to go into this district to make it successful. We have had opportunities, but your biggest, we've said it, everyone said here, that the representation of what we're doing. Let's speak to the children and the parents. Let's ask those parents, do they think that Asbury Park is the most successful district that they can go to? No. Most, most of them have other opportunities to go to, or they go to the charter school. The charter schools have, have stolen our kids. If we're the best product, we would be gaining those kids back. We would be controlling where our students are going. We have to be the direction, we have to be the leaders, and we have to be honest with ourselves and this district. Thank, thank you. And finally, Dr. Penna. I'd also like to thank the League of Women Voters, and I'd like to thank all the candidates here tonight for having a great conversation. Again, my name is Dr. Michael Penna. I'm running for Asbury Park School Board. Again, I'm thrilled to be on the ballot this year with current school board members, Barbara Lisinski and Dominic Lactaraka as the Moving Ahead Together ticket. I think we make a really great team and we're gonna bring brand new ideas and a balance to the school board. Uh, again, I decided to run for the school board because I wanted to see educators and the education community represented on the board. I wanted to see members of the LGBTQ plus community represent, represented on the school board. Uh, and that is why I hope that this election, you will vote for Barbara, Dominic and myself because you share in our vision for the Asbury Park School District. You share an understanding that diversity and inclusion are important in a community because diversity deserves equality. You share in knowing that empathy and kindness are essential in our communities, and to share in the understanding that we must all move forward together. So please vote Lazinski, Penna, and Lataraka in this election and help bring balance and continued growth to the Asbury Park School Board. Thank you. Thank you. And I also wanna thank all the candidates and the sponsors, and I hope everyone has had an opportunity to hear what the candidates' views are. And I will now, thank you. And I will, we will be putting up a final uh, visual, visual where I will speak to the um, few words about voting in the upcoming election. In order to vote, you must be registered by Tuesday, October 18th. For registration information and forms in Monmouth County, visit monmouthcountyvotes.com. There are three ways for registered voters to vote. You can vote by mail. The, to receive a vote by mail ballot, follow the instructions at monmouthcountyvotes.com. You see the link here. You can return your ballot by mailing it or by placing it in any of the drop boxes in any place in Monmouth County or by delivering it in person to the Board of Elections at 300 Halls Mills Road in Freehold. You can vote in person in early person in person early voting before November 8th. You can cast your ballot by using a voting machine at any early voting site in Monmouth County, which are found at this website also, during the nine-day early voting period, which starts on Saturday, October 29th, goes through Sunday, November 8th. Choose a time that is convenient for you. There are long hours at these uh, at these early voting sites. Or finally, in person on election day, Tuesday, November 8th, you can cast your ballot using a voting machine at your assigned local voting site, different than the early voting sites in some cases. Polls are open on election day from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. For any questions you might have, you can go to the monmouthcountyvotes.com site. And uh, as a moderator for the League of Women Voters, I thank you for your attention tonight. Good night.